Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in mid-Michigan and today we are outside on a beautiful fall day and we're going to get some things done together. Uh, this is just going to be a garden with me video so let's take a look at what we're going to start with. So over here we have some beautiful hibiscus plants that are turning yellow in the fall color and behind them the Tian Shen 7 sunflowers and they look really nice but I'm going to be planting some bulbs and I also really just want to enjoy those Tian Shen 7 sunflowers for, well, until they actually last. We're supposed to get some snow on Tuesday uh, and I'm not really looking forward to it. But I think we're going to get a little bit more out of those shrubs and so in order to kind of highlight them more, I'm just going to cut the hibiscus back a little bit and open up the area and I think it's going to be great. Let's get going. So hibiscus, they could stay out the whole winter just like this. And many people will tell you not to clip them back until spring because they have a hollow stem and they're afraid that water will get down into there. Um, that's not been the case for me. I haven't had a problem with it at all. These do have beautiful seed heads on them if they've been pollinated. So if you want to leave them because you have space for them and you want to look at them, it's a wonderful piece of winter interest. But for me today, I'm going to cut back some of this because I just want to get this cleaned up a bit. Some of these stems are really thick, but I'm finding that my Felcos are doing a good job of just clipping right through them, which is fantastic. Now I do want to leave about, oh, a good six to 12 inches on this because I do want to know exactly where it's at when spring comes and I don't remember exactly where it's planted. That's really important. I'm going to, while I'm in here, just clean up some of these daylilies as well. As their foliage dies back, that is something I always clean up every fall before spring because I don't like leaving that on the ground. I want to get these back just a little bit further. Again, I want to be able to see them and know where the plant is, but I don't need it to be this tall. All right, let's head over and do the other one. Overall, these are a really easy care perennial. This is pretty much the only thing I do to them all season. Now, once we have all of these cut back, then we'll get this all cleaned up off of the, the ground here and show you just what a nice view I'm hoping to create. I don't know about you, but in the springtime, always, I'm always like, I need more, I wanna see more. By the time we get to fall, I start wanting things to look a little bit less abundant after we've had the bounty of summer. And so it feels good to get things kind of cleaned up and tidy. I leave a lot up during the fall in winter, but there are a few things that I do actually cut back. 
These are one that sometimes I leave and sometimes I clean up. It just depends. This year they were so big that uh, I really just want to open this area up. You can see we have this stray branch that is hanging down from the Tian Shen, and I'm just going to give that a trim. No need for that to stay on at this point. All right, let me grab the cart and get it filled up with all of this debris. you have the time before you put things in the compost pile it's always nice to kind of trim them into little bit smaller pieces so that's what I'm doing right here as I get these into this cart usually use the size of the cart as a kind of guide for how small to make things. I'm really not overzealous about the size that I'm clipping, but again, just to help with breaking it down, making it fit into the compost bin and the garden cart. and pile down. Something I'm spying as I'm cleaning up the area is this Veronica. So I'm actually gonna cut that back as well. There's a couple of them in this garden bed that need to be cut back and on the other side. So I'll just take the flower spikes right back down to the ground.
And there's another one back here. This is just a nice efficient way to go about doing garden beds is if you're working on one thing and you see something else that needs to get done, you know, just tackle it when you're there. Now in this garden bed, we really only have the one, so we'll get this one clipped back. Oh, no, I guess there's two of them right next to each other. Here we go. We're just gonna do a little tidy up as well, kind of clean off some of this debris from the sidewalk. I can breathe a sigh of relief now. I feel like those Tian Shen seven sunflowers have been freed. And you can even see the Rose of Sharon right here that is definitely beginning to put on some fall color as well. We'll get lots of rose hips on this rose here. This is the high voltage rose. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing if those change colors and uh, get some fall color. But I think this has really opened up this space and it feels much more inviting now. And I have a nice sigh of relief, feeling like it's been tidied. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video where we just kind of did a little bit of cleanup in one of the garden beds and we've got more to come as fall progresses. So stay tuned. See you next time.